am live. I am live. And um, it should be pretty interesting tonight because the topic is relatively interesting tonight. I encourage you all to take a moment and meditate with me um, just so that we can bring down the highest vibrational information on um, these particular archetypes and topics that we're speaking on tonight. So while it might seem ratchet and hood, um, these are archetypes. These are the archetypes of our world. And it's really important that we pull down the correct energy so that we can speak most effectively about them. So let's do three divine breaths for the Trinity. we might be ready to go um i gave this topic a lot of thought this week and just so everyone is aware whether you're going to view this later or coming in now i will be um going live every sunday night with a new with a different topic every sunday night between we'll say 8 30 or 8 15 and 9 30 p.m um i have to do a range because my schedule changes every week um, I would like to go live more on the earlier end, but you be here every Sunday. And, um, yeah. So, so I gave this topic a lot of thought tonight. The unhappy fat, the unfulfilled virgin, and the complete woman. Um, growing up, there was always... There always is a battle between this good girl, bad girl narrative. And I was very aware of this. And while I personally, I didn't really get into schematics with this. Um, I was more of like a, an observer. And the main thing is when you're starting off, uh, the biggest thing most loving thing you can do for yourself is not to judge yourself because when you judge yourself you are so caught up in your own pain that you lose the ability to think objectively and while you don't want to be objective all the time it's important to be objective because when you are objective you have the ability to cut through things to see from a higher perspective to see through many um, dimensional filters and levels. And you always wanna try and get the widest, broadest, most complex view. And non-judgment is sort of the inception of that and creating a fluid mind. So the thought is an archetype in our world now. And the thought, and it's funny because this song keeps running in my head even before I started this, but on that song, what's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love, a secondhand emotion? That is the unhappy thought and the unfulfilled version. Honestly, it could be either archetype. So let's talk about the first one. The unhappy thought would typically be um, a woman who could or could not be considered a feminist, um, a woman who believes that she is in control of her sexual power and prowess. Um, this would be a woman who typically was raised by a single mother and is very rebellious when it comes to dealing with men. Um, and sometimes you need to be rebellious. That's a good thing to have. Um, so it's either they're going to be very rebellious or they're going to be very malleable. And this woman typically will view herself only as a commodity. And she may, although that is the truth of it, because she's over-sexualized herself, while women should be in control of their sexual 
powers and women should be sensual. And I think sensuality is a big thing we're missing in the world today. Um, it's very, very important not to be over-sexualized. And that's very difficult to do in an over-sexualized society. So the unhappy thought is the IG model that's getting a um, serotonin boost off of likes. That's the woman who doesn't mind being naked, doesn't mind having her breasts and her ass out and all this, and she does it in a very a distasteful way. Um, Cause there's a tasteful way of doing that. I've seen plenty of art that the woman is naked, but her body is is photographed and placed in such a way that it becomes the art that it actually is, and that's very important for these days and times to de maybe desexualize the woman a little bit and put her back in her rightful place but she has to get out of um, the thought that she is unable to generate finances wealth to be anything other than her sexuality and when a woman is so involved with their sexuality they lose their identity in that they think that that's all they are so when they begin to age um, they typically will not age gracefully or while they age, when they begin to age, they'll start to try and keep up with the Joneses. So we have this thought and call her Miss, Miss Thought. And, <laughs> and she's going through the world and jumping from man to man. And her psychosis is going to be, well, the way that she's lying to herself is she's telling herself that this woman would typically lie to herself and tell herself that she's empowered she would say oh I could do what I want I'm empowered and while you do have free will and you can do what you want I'm not taking that away from anyone um, you have to think about the consequences of your actions not so much how they relate to other people but how how it's going to affect you when you're walking around sleeping around with all these different men um, you're taking on a lot of different energies and I, I need to reiterate that you're taking on entirely too many different energies and when you identify so much with your sexuality you come to a space that you can't differentiate um, between yourself and your sexuality so instead of taking that energy and channeling it towards a business towards um, art towards poetry towards something um, productive and fulfilling for you, you take the energy and you channel it only towards sex. And when you're taking on different energies, now you have different men that are draining your sexual creative energy and they're taking what they want. They want a piece of your light, your energy. They're gonna take it and they're gonna use your shit to fulfill their purpose. So it's the same thing as going to a job and being a slave to your boss and choosing to fulfill your boss's purpose. Now what you're doing is you're, you're fulfilling another, per, another being's purpose and you're allowing them to take advantage of you in such a way that you have no, you have no, what's the word? You have no identity anymore, you know? And if you think that these men, because men are, Men are pretty disgusting. So if you think that these men are being compassionate and caring about you when you're not there, you're sorely mistaken. That's why thoughts get ran through. That's why thoughts get thrown out. That's why thoughts get beat the fuck up because they have no intrinsic value. And so when you do not value yourself intrinsically and with from within, um, you will attract situations to you where your value becomes diminished and once your beauty starts to fade once your Instagram likes drop once you actually get on Instagram and realize that even though you're posting a fucking ad shot every day you can't sell a book or a t-shirt because nobody gives a fuck they're like give us your free ass we don't give a fuck about your product we don't give a fuck about you really we just want to see you naked so, I mean, people sit here and think that the grass is greener, but no, 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 my friend. The grass is definitely not greener on the other side. 
So that's the archetype of the unhappy thought. She's the um, unbalanced, extremely over-sexualized woman who believes that her over-sexualization is where her power lies. When the truth is that balance, being balanced in your sexuality is where your power lies. And I'm not saying for us to be fucking religious. I'm just saying for us to be more thoughtful and loving to ourselves because we view so much through our pain that then we get to a space where where women are not coming to a space of taking responsibility for damaging their own pain or emotional body, their own energetic body, and their own soul. You are giving away pieces of your soul like it doesn't matter. Do you think that you don't matter? Do you think that do you, do you hate yourself so much that you would destroy yourself in such a way? Why, why is your pussy for sale? Why is your pussy for likes? It's not even selling no more. People are putting up their pussy for likes. That's how bad it's getting. If a rapper will put you on his fucking profile, a bitch will bust it wide open. And women need to start being more cognizant of what they're doing with their sexual energy. Not for the man fuck the men and not to find a man fuck that shit but to find yourself and that's where i'm compassionate because i'm like damn son people really need this they need to find themselves they need to find their heart um sorry okay so let's see if we have any comments not so far y'all are just chilling all right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the unfulfilled virgin. Now, this is like seemingly the opposite end of the spectrum. <clears throat> um, the prude, the woman who maybe only had like two or three boyfriends, the woman who perhaps um, doesn't sleep around, doesn't date much, uh, stays home, you know. And there, there's another archetype, but I'm not going to speak on that tonight. And that's actually the the... the fake intellectual woman but that archetype we'll speak about another night tonight is going to be the, the unhappy thought which we did we went through now we're going to go through the unfulfilled virgin <clears throat> and some of these intellectual women are unfulfilled virgins um typically the unfulfilled virgin may or may not have had a father the unfulfilled virgin and i only say virgin because to denote prudeness they may or may not be an actual virgin, um, but they're dealing more with not being able to feel um, empowered. They may have um, very low libido, very low sexual energy. Um, they may care more about like, you know, I think old girls care about this shit, I guess, I don't know, and makeup, bags, the material things um they may view and and both women it's funny because i'm seeing a lot of parallels between both these women both women will view men as uh nothing more than a a mechanism to get what they want so although the the unfulfilled virgin and the unhappy thought both view men as simply a mechanism for getting what they want. And they don't have any intrinsic power because they don't believe that without a man um, in their life, whether it be their father, whether it be their one boyfriend that they've had for 10 years for the um, unfulfilled version, the unhappy thought for her it would be a string of men but they, each of them would serve a purpose. She may be entertaining four or five men or more, maybe, who knows, um, at the same time. And each man has a function. So now, as you're not viewing yourself in your wholeness, you're also not viewing other the opposite sex in their wholeness. So then you create, you're create you going to start creating an, uh, um, an imbalance. And you're going to, both women will attract imbalanced relationships. And um, the unfulfilled virgin would be like um, an Aisha Curry. And that's a good archetype for that because she never had a phase where she could 
have explored her sexual energy um, in a, in a, even in a sensual way. And the problem with not having the ability to explore your sexual energy, whether you do it creatively or your sensual energy, whether you do it creatively, whether you have a partner that's um, into true Tantra, um, whether you have um, a father that teaches you or a mother that teaches you how to handle your sensual energy, um, they'll come to a space where they don't really want to have sex and they may actually totally shut down their sexuality, their sensual energy. Um, they may not have orgasms. Both women may not have orgasms, one from overstimulation and one from understimulation. So even though these seem like two different archetypes, they're really the same woman. It's like two sides to a coin. If you look at a penny, it's two sides to a coin. They look different, but they're on the same coin. So both of these archetypes are really going through a lot of the same things. Um, but they're just doing it in their own way on opposite spectrums. And it's coming from a sense of unfulfillment within the self. So that intrinsic value is depleted in both women. So because the intrinsic value is depleted in both women, neither woman is finding is they're both searching outside of themselves for what they want, but neither of them knows their sole purpose. And it's really important right now that sisters are taking time to heal, taking time to love themselves, taking time to find themselves. And um, if any of my sisters need me, please feel free to contact me. You guys know I do my um, my intuitive um, readings, which are more of like really a healing session, a lot of inner child work, um, a lot of shadow work. Um, a lot of visualization and meditation techniques. I mean, this is a healing work. This work changes people's lives. I've had more than one woman tell me. Um, I've had more than one client tell me. And they don't need a lot of sessions. Um, also, so the healing work needs to be done. Where you, can, where you can find, it's so important to find your foundational soul purpose. To to stop judging yourself because the unhappy thought went and decided fuck it if everyone's gonna call me a hoe I'm gonna be a fucking hoe and the unfulfilled virgin is unfulfilled because she never got to fully explore her sexual energy so she's like well, well she's dealing more in a space of they're both dealing kind of um, unbalanced spaces but the unfulfilled virgin is dealing more in a space of fear and fear of judgment and in that fear of judgment, they may find themselves judging other women a lot. And that has to stop. Women don't need to be battling other women. Um, all right, so that's kind of like our two main archetypes. The third one we're gonna get to is the complete woman. And uh, I can only speak on this because I've done uh, cord cutting ceremonies I've done soul ties, releasing soul ties. Um, I've done yoni cleanses. I've done fasts. I've done a lot of cleansing of my cells. Um, just to be able to come to a space, um, getting very creative, abstaining from sex. Um, all, these, all these different mechanisms. Simply so I can get to a place and a space where I can, where I can finally feel myself. And once you clear out all the drama, all the bullshit, all the emotional pain, all the suffering, you find this delicious joy. It's the best way I can describe it. You find this delicious joy within yourself. And it's that um, delicious joy that carries you um, as the complete woman. The complete woman um, is not afraid of the sexual energy but in her freedom she learns control and discipline and it's her own version of discipline it's not what religion or anything else teaches you it's more of a flow it's more of like you start to respect and love your soul so much that you start to pull away from sexual partners even if even the even the um, un, um the unfulfilled version her soul may be saying the opposite like okay you need to have a casual relationship with someone and you need to learn detachment instead of thinking that every man you have to be with is 
is going to be your boyfriend. So while one woman needs to pull back, the other woman may need to expand more, but it's in a very controlled, self-controlled, self-contained, knowledgeable way. The problem is that so many people are, are engrossed in materialism, that, and there's nothing wrong with materialism. We all need things. But when you're so engrossed in materialism, you begin to leave your soul behind. And when you leave your soul behind and you don't think about your soul, you, you start to feel very lost. And at some point, you'll come to a space in your life where you're like, I'm lost. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. So the complete woman will be a woman that is creative that's confident, that can endure, that uh, that can endure, but doesn't let people disrespect. They endure for a purpose. They're wise. They um they deal with healing. They're helpful. They're in their own power. They're industrious. That's the more um, version of the complete woman. And then in this woman, the sexual energy will be a flow and a balance and when you become that woman you can work in either your masculine or feminine energy that's where it gets interesting where you can work in your masculine or your feminine energy and when you can do that you can create balance between the masculine and feminine energy within self and then as you color your world with love for yourself you can begin to love others the same way and just appreciate them exactly as they are. No judgment. Releasing the judgment. You start to appreciate people exactly as they are and you can come to a space as the complete woman that is in a space of balance between her own masculine and feminine energy and she will attract a partner if she, so, if she desires that is also in balance with that energy. And then life doesn't become drama. Life becomes fun. It becomes play. It becomes beautiful. And the whole thing is you're going to have everything around you trying to pull you back into your own habits and your old ways. And I'm just going to encourage you tonight not to do that. And I want to encourage you to stay out of your own way. Don't allow the things around you to affect your inner sphere. And if they are affecting you, don't deny that they are affecting you. Take time to try and understand the emotion that is coming up because that is how you start to create balance within the heart. And once you have balance and you understand and can speak with your heart, you can, you can move forward in the world with purpose. You can move forward in the world and actually accomplish your mission. Um, so that's really all going to be based in your soul purpose and finding your soul purpose. And if you're in the searching phase, it's totally okay. Just admit to yourself that you're in the searching phase so you don't lose your shit and start acting crazy. Um, so short and sweet. That's my message tonight. Um, yeah, this is more from my feminine perspective because uh, I'm a woman. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Have a beautiful evening. Peace.